Alright guys, welcome back to the channel here. In today's installment for the Boss GT1000 Core, we are in Tone Studio and we are going to take a look at the menu up here. So if we enter the menu, you'll see that we have a lot of different tabs to choose from on the left hand side here. Right off the bat, these are the same available data which you can find on the unit itself, but you might find it easier to navigate through once you are connected to your computer. Uh, first off, we have the knob settings here, which will be the overall uh, layout of your different knobs. So knob corresponding to one through five. And you can go in and select the different knobs here. You can set up their selected uh, target category, which you want to set up or maybe change. This right here is how they are set up by default. So you have your option to change the air preamp uh, whether it's the gain, the bass or treble. You could also select or change the master beats per minute and you can adjust the master patch level. So if you wish to have anything else on here, you just go in and you find your dedicated knob. Let's see, we don't want the add preamp. We maybe want the equalizer or the delay, for example. You go in and you choose that and it will set up and change to that. And of course, you go in and select the parameter of that category. So whether you want to change the level, for example, of a delay or uh, engage the solo switch for a overdrive or a distortion, for example, that would be how you do it. Moving on to the input setting here, which is actually corresponding to the input calibration of the unit here. And be sure to check out the video that I did on that because it's quite an important step to getting your guitar or guitars input calibrated in order to make them work because most guitars will have different pickups, different configurations, and it will just be an important step to perform. So make sure to press the link up in the right hand corner here so you can do that before you do anything else. But the input setting here, um, it will also load up on your GT1000 core while you have it looked or hooked up to your computer here. And you will only be able to see the input calibration meter on the GT1000 core itself. So you will have to look at the meter and then adjust the input level in order to match your guitar to the calibration. And you actually have the option of setting up 10 different instruments here. So five basses, five guitars, or whatever you might want to hook up here and you can name them so you always know that once you are changing instruments, you can go in and find that dedicated instrument and change it so you know that the input calibration is done. You won't have your pickups overriding the input causing digital distortion, which could basically ruin your patches and the sound that you're outputting to whatever gear you might have connected the GT1000 core to. Over to the output setting here, which is also an important step here. There's a dedicated video up in the right hand corner as well for that. But you have your dedicated output setting for both the main out and the sub out. The main out will be your main left and right outputs. And you have a vast majority of selections to choose from here. It is also gone through in the dedicated video. So be sure to check that out. Um, and you have your main out global EQ and you have your stereo link and this basically means that if you have your stereo link on, the output or what the preamp models are set to will be output in stereo. If you turn that off, you'll have them output in left and right channels. But I don't really play around with the global EQ. I will leave that as default because I don't see any option, at least only if it's the last resort here. I like to get in and adjust the things that I would like to change on the actual effect blocks himself. Well, heading over to the total setting here, we have the total noise threshold and we have the total reverb level. So if you wish to want to go in and adjust the overall reverb level, you could do it here globally. And the same for the noise suppressors threshold. If we go into the play option here, we will have the play option for the patches and the phrase loop. And we have the patch extent ranging from the very first patch up all the way to the very last patch. And we have the phrase loop here and its mode, whether it's mono or stereo, and the recording action. 
So it will be record, play, and then overdub. If we head into the hardware settings here, you'll see that we have a selection of different options here. We have the M control, which will be settings for your modes. If you have hooked up your GT1000 core to your amplifier for switching channels, the expression pedal hold, which you can toggle on or off in here. You have a ground lift. You can activate if you are getting buses or hum. There's an auto off for the unit so that it will shut off after a certain amount of time. And there are settings for the Scent 1 and 2 as well as the CTO 4 and 5 here. And um, it might be a good idea to set the Scent sub out to mute as well as the same for the Scent 2 here in order to have only the main out sent through the outputs. Heading over to the USB settings here, you have a dedicated panel for the dry, the main, and the sub outs. And the main outs will be what you are seeing because you are connecting it by USB through the main outputs. And you be sure to select that whether it's in your DAW or as your sound driver on your computer. And the main effects out will control the output from the GT1000 core into your recording software, for example. And default is set to 100. I found that to be a little hot, so I just dialed it down a little bit. You have your main mix level, which will be the level of the mix that you're hearing through your headphones or monitors, whether you have that hooked up. And you have your main direct monitor. And the direct monitor can be toggled on or off. You will have it on on, if you are just connecting your GT1000 core here uh, via USB and then using your headphones. If you are connecting it and you're running the GT1000 core through your, uh, your recording software, you will have to set it to off in here. And uh, you can use the dedicated monitor icon within your DAW to set up and have your sound coming through there. And the same goes for the sub over here. Moving on to the MIDI settings, page one and page two, you have your different options. You can go in and set up here in order to make all that work. And your MIDI program map as well. There's a stump box data backup. You have your access to the owner's manual as well as the device setup here where you can go in and select uh, the device and the MIDI ins and out. You have an overview of your version as well. And you have an all data backup. So you can restore or you can backup if you have done any of that uh, previously to this. So this is the overall layout of the menu here. There are a lot of menus to go through. And if you have any questions in regards to this, please let me know. But all of these are also found in both the owner's manual and the parameter guide where they are explained in a little more detail because something like the MIDI and all that, it's another subject. So it will be wise for you to go in and check that out otherwise. So thanks for watching here, guys. I hope you found this helpful. And until next time, I will see you in the new video. 